Hey guys, how's it going? Culprit here, and once again I'm going to introduce you to a new series I plan on doing now for Battlefield 4, and that's called Battlefield 4 After Action Review. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with After Action Reviews, let me give you a quick little definition for it. An After Action Review AAR is a structured review or debrief process for analyzing what happened, why it happened, and how it can be done better by the participants and those responsible for the project or event. This is obviously a military term. I believe it originated with the U.S. Army. Uh, there's always been an informal debriefing process, but this is just kind of formalize it. Basically, it's an analysis of what happened in an event, you know, an encounter, an engagement, and, you know, in an effort to kind of figure out what you did right, what you did wrong, what you can do better. And I figured that translated really nicely over to some of my gameplays and how I like to talk. So I'm going to be doing that with Battlefield 4 in a series now, a weekly series. I'm going to take one of my gameplays and I'm going to pick them for all varying different reasons. Some, you know, some very good, some very bad. Uh, ones I think are particularly interesting. And I'm going to watch them with you guys as we're doing here, and I'm going to just talk about some of the things I did well, some of the things I didn't do well, what I could do better, and I'm going to kind of live com over them as I watch them. These are obviously aren't real live comms, in hopes that I can learn better through my own analysis. You guys can give me comments you know, and, and explain to me what you think I did good, what, what you think I did wrong, and as a whole, as a group, we can all hopefully improve, at least in our strategy and tactics, and then we can translate that and, and improve our games. That's always the goal here on my channel. So uh, let me just kick right off and explain to you why you're seeing a weird gamer tag, Diggs13. It's a buddy of mine. I work with him. Um, he hadn't been able to play very much, so we, we had a rainy day at work, came over to my house, logged into his origin, and that's why you're seeing the weird gamer tag. But this is me playing uh, right there. First thing to point out, total minimap fail. I didn't see the guys getting capping the flag right behind me. Uh, Got to be more aware of that. It's one of the things I definitely have to work on is looking at that minimap a lot more. Here you see, uh, you know, I spawn in. I'm, I'm on high ground. I probably should have stayed up there. I don't really know why I dropped down. Uh, you know, I'm still learning the ropes here. I uh, was definitely in a position of power there. Uh, trying to hold off the flag. Moving to the corner, which is good. I like this. You know, it's not very often in Battlefield 4 that you get to kind of, you know, forget about certain areas behind you and to your side. So here, I'm in a pretty good position here as well. If you know, it might be obvious to an enemy to look here. That's my only real concern. Again, I move out of it. I get in a little more. Like ah, I, I end up taking it. I thought I, I thought I went down there. So I, you know, sometimes you bail yourself out. That guy's on fire. <laughs> Don't chase the guy that's on fire. Again, I managed to pull that one away, but uh, just just run into too much heat. Uh, again, that is a big problem for me. A little Rambo syndrome. I get a little too bloodthirsty. I, I, I want to go for that singular kill. Next thing you know, I end up surrounded and, and I'm dying. Uh, here we go. We spawn in. We I always help your teammates. You gotta always be helping them. Free points keeps them up, and, and that's gonna keep you alive in the long run as well. Uh, you can see here, I'm kind of working the edges of the map. That's just a really, really solid fundamental tactic in any first-person shooter. Keep a boundary to one of your sides. Again, you cannot really worry. You don't have to worry about that side. Um, whenever you can, try to do that. Hug those boundaries when they enable it. Um, some of these have pretty healthy boundaries, like right here. Actually, there's a lot more space to the right than you'd think. But in that case back there, I was doing a pretty good job. Uh, I, this, I mean, Ali, you guys have played this domination on Galmud Air, uh, Railway. Very active little lane here. Uh, I probably shouldn't be hanging out in the street as much there. I, again, I'm no patience. I, I go around. I, I didn't really run around the corner, but I didn't go around the corner with any caution or any, you know, just I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared to fight. I paid the price. Um, I'm basically in Battlefield 4. I'm trying to learn how to play small, slower and smarter. A lot of you guys are probably more accustomed to seeing me playing a little crazier, a little faster, just bad aim right there. I'm, 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 I want to say I'm struggling with that, but I don't know that I'm struggling with that. I'm still just getting accustomed. Actually, I'm doing fairly well uh, now that I've kind of figured out my settings. But uh, yeah, I'm making an effort to you know play a little smarter, play a little slower, and you know I find it's easier to slow way down and then speed up as you know as you're getting comfortable than to kind of pick and choose your spot. So a lot of times in the beginning of matches, you'll see me play very slow. I will literally in, in a domination match, I'll move from flag to flag, and you know and, and park it there and defend it, especially on these smaller maps where the action can quite literally come to you. You see me doing that in a building. A lot of times I like to take a building like that, stop, and just chill out and kind of gather myself. And and a lot of times I'll be watching the mini-map more than I'm watching out the windows or not. And I'm trying to kind of gather where everybody is, where they're spawning, what flags they're attacking. Here I'm getting a little brazen. I'm tacking right down Main Street, going right down the middle. I don't do this very often, but sometimes when I get the feeling like it's a merry-go-round and people are just running around the edges of the map, because everybody knows that tactic. It's always good to stay on a boundary. So when I get a feeling like it's just turning into a merry-go-round, sometimes just to switch it up, I will just cut right down the middle of the map. I may die for it, but I feel like at least I'll disrupt the rhythm and, you know, kind of be to my advantage, especially because I like randomness. I like a little bit of chaos as far as in the enemy's minds. So anytime I can kind of just throw them off and do something unexpected, I think is sometimes worth a life. Not always. Uh, that's up to your, you know, your, 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 uh, 
your understanding of the match, I guess, and how that's going. Here, we've already, you know, we've opened up a pretty good lead. We're starting to put our, you know, put our foot on their throats. We should probably be playing a little safer here. Don't know why I didn't get that revive right there. Actually turned out to be a good decision because it's a little hot. This is something, too, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with the transition to the sidearm. He uh, bested me there. I uh, just missed a couple shots. That I'm having a hard time with pistols. I'm not going to pretend. Uh, they're, they're just not as effective for me. I'm, I'm wondering if I maybe get a... I feel like there's the flash on the pistol is throwing me off. So I'm hoping maybe if I get an attachment or two, that I'll fare a little bit better. Definitely something I'm going to work on. Actually, when we have 008, get our own server. I think we're going to do a couple pistol-only nights. Let everybody kind of get used to their sidearms and rank them up a little bit. I think that would be a pr pretty good idea. That guy. I love the ragdoll. The ragdoll physics are awesome in this game. He took a nice explosion to the face. Um, still getting used to the keys. Uh, my, my key bindings are a little weird. Uh, there's some issues, obviously, so you see me there. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. This is an earlier match, as you can see, uh, because we just got the M416. It, it was naked at the beginning of the match, if you missed that. So, it's a pretty early round. Uh, I've come a little ways since this, but still not 100%. So here you go. Again, like I said, the match has gotten very tight now. Uh, it could go either way. We should have probably played a little smarter. I should have slowed down. I probably should have just said, you know what? Uh, um, B flag is mine or A flag, what have, whatever flag is mine. Probably the corner flag, the A flag, I believe it is, would have been better. Just And just park myself there and not let them take it without a really vicious fight. And that probably would have been smarter. And let the blue bees kind of do the dirty work. Uh, that's kind of what I like to do. I like to, try, I like to try on domination anyways to find the two power flags. Usually there's two flags that are easier to hold than the other two. Uh, there's some combination... Yeah, miss, yeah, Dilly Dow there, Mr. Revive. There's some combination that are more easy to hold. Uh, here I would say it's the AB flag. Is, is, I think that's correct. Um, right here, because you can run up and down this alley. You can use these buildings. You can almost hold them both really, really easy. Uh, Shanghai, I think, I believe it's A and B. It's not the rooftop one. And then you can just you know go back and forth holding these two down, just defending them. It's, it's hard to capture them on your own, but once you have them, it's a little easier to defend them. And then what you do is you let your randoms, you let your bluebies, you let them go out, and they try to tr get that triple cap. You don't do that. You're kind of the, the, the anchor, the one that's going to hold it all together and let them kind of throw themselves uh, at the enemy. Right there, I knew there was a nest up there. There's a guy upstairs. I, I'm, I'm liking the 320 now. I mean, I love revives, but in Domination, usually the pace is too fast. It, it can be hard to get a revive. A lot of times when I'm playing by myself like I am here, I will just throw on the uh, 320. This way I can blow up walls. If a sniper's there, I'm not really trying to get the kill. I'm just trying to give, you know, remove that cover for him, making him move on. If he doesn't move on, then I'll go up and get him. But uh, I'm loving the destruction, uh, you know, like this, and how these buildings can actually come down. It takes a lot to take them down, but they can come down. But you can usually remove a sniper nest and, and just take it out. And, and then you're not going to be surprised. You're not going to have some guy standing there overlooking the flag the whole round. It's really a, a nice little tool, and I'm really enjoying that. So here you go. We have really kind of opened up a nice lead here. We've, we've done a really good job. Had them triple capped. You can see they're bleeding down. Now it's kind of... <laughs> this is this is another part of the match that I get in trouble. I usually have some time like this. I get a little antsy. And I want to I want to finish off a good round by getting a lot of kills. And what I end up doing is acquiring several deaths. And I think everybody has that. It's, it's a kind of a leak in my game, you could say. Um, I, I should just continue to play how I'm playing. Take the round I get and not push it. Not force it. Because at least for me... When I'm forcing things, I'm getting antsy and I'm getting a little excited. I tend to make bad decisions, over overzealous decisions, and, and, and they turn out pretty poorly for me. Uh, but in this match, I played pretty well. I'm really wrapping my head around Battlefield 4 pretty good. Uh, I was always moving. I probably should have you know, stayed stationary, stayed a little more defensive, like I mentioned. Uh, but in that, what did you guys see in this round? Where do you think I can improve? Give me some tips, you know, some micro tips, a little like, should have done this better in this little gunfight, and macro tips as far as strategy and tactics and things. Um, overall, I'm, I'm really enjoying Domination. I think it's really good for your gun skill. It's really good for your gunfighting skill. And, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's still getting me used. I have about 10 to 15 hours, I don't know, because like I said, I've play, I played on the second account a little bit. I don't exactly know. Hours in the game, predominantly played in Domination. And, uh, you know, I think my game's better for it, but I'm, I'm having a good time. I hope you guys are, too. Hopefully this video will help us all kind of improve. Like I said, please post in the comments with any tips or tactics or any questions and discussions we can have. That is the goal of this series. And once we get some discussion going, I'll be sure to answer you in the comments as best I can. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. I will talk to you soon. Take care.